Hi there, my name is Scott Arthur and I'm the Transport and Environment Community Convener here in Edinburgh. And this is a, a quick video to talk you through some of the things we're going to be talking about committee next week. And I have to say that this is a, <laughs> I think about the third or fourth time I've tried to make this video because there's, there's just so much to talk about and it's so exciting that my videos keep on coming out far too long. I stopped, half, I stopped halfway through there, it was like 14 minutes, which is just bonkers. Uh, but I could talk for much longer. So really, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of proposals coming to the committee next week to to improve transport in our city, uh, and I'm going to talk you through them very quickly. But they're really really important. It's worth looking at the papers. But really, what we aim to do do with these is cut congestion, uh, make sure our transport city is fit for the future. I mean, there's tens of thousands of houses going to be built inside Edinburgh over the next ten years, and more outside the city. So we have to get transport working for for those people. Uh, and the city as a whole. Uh, we've got to meet our climate uh, obligations, so reduce emissions, transport's a big contributor, and we've got to try to create a more equal city, and that's in terms of income, that's in terms of access to transport, and that's in, in terms of people who have mobility problems as well. We've got to create that more equal city. So that's really the, the focus of everything we're trying to do. Now I'm going to do this as quickly as I possibly can, but there's just so much to get through. Uh, so the first thing up, city mobility plan. This is kind of how we're wanting to, what what the destination uh, is for uh, destination. If we can use that that pun in this context for transport in the city, uh, but it's it's going to take a long time to get to this destination. So this outlines actions. It also it, it reflects on the performance of the network over the last few years, and obviously COVID had the COVID transit out of COVID the transition into COVID had a big impact on that. So I'm so excited. I'm getting my words mixed up. It's had a big impact on that, and that's reflected in some of the data that's reported, and you can uh, assess that through your own, uh, the way you interact with the transport system. But it also looks to the future as well, so a range of options from, you know, what apparently quite mundane, but transformative for individuals, you know, things like dropping curbs, 400 per year, it really changed in people's lives who, who, need, who need drop curbs, through to um, measures like... Uh, 777 bus lanes, so bus lanes open on a trial basis, just operating from 7am to 7pm, 7 days a week. Uh, looking at the Southern Sub uh, Railway loop, whether or not we can connect that to a future tram in, in the city. Uh, so so that's here as well. So there's a, there's a breadth of things in there, and no matter what you think about transport in the city, there there will be things that you agree with. And there might be also things that you're, you're less keen on, of course. Well, there's a circulation plan, and this is our, our blueprint for transport in the city. Uh, I think the what Leith Walk shows us is that. Oops, sorry, I'm trying to move myself now. Move the slide. What Leith Walk showed us, it showed us is even on the wider streets in the city, we, we can't fit in. You know, walking, cycling, cars, parking, loading, buses, and trams all in one route. We have to make decisions about what we want to do well. And in a lot of key routes in the city, we can only really do two things well. And that's going to be, for arterial routes for me, that's going to be the pedestrian space, getting that absolutely tip top, and also making sure we've got fantastic public transport connections. Uh, so, so, so that's my priorities. Everybody, I'll look at that a, a slightly different way. And I have to remind people I'm only one person on the committee and I have the same vote as everybody else. So, so this is a really important report uh, for the city. Now, when this, when the circulation plan comes at the city centre, uh, things get interesting. Oops. Almost gave the game away there. I was, that was a spoiler alert there. We'll come back to that. Don't worry, you don't have to rewind the video. So, since I moved to Edinburgh in 1996, people have been talking about reducing through traffic in the city centre because of the way issues traffic can cause in the city centre. Uh, uh, one of the council officers showed me a leaflet from 1989 where the council was talking about the impact congestion was having the city centre, having on people, having on the economy. And here we are 35 years later and I don't think things have got any better. Uh, so off, off the back of that, the, the previous transport committee came up with this thing called Edinburgh City Centre Transformation, ECCT, which was a plan to reduce through traffic in the city centre. And you can see it in the shaded areas here on, on the map. Now we consulted, not specifically on this plan, because that had already been done, but we consulted on traffic in the city, transport in the city last year, and that there was a few key questions around the city centre. And what that showed is there, there's a real appetite for, you know, us doing more on this. I think 
two thirds of people supported there being less traffic in the city centre. Uh, so uh, they were urging us to be, I think they were urging us to, to, to think bigger, you know, be bolder uh, and go faster. Uh, and so I think that's what we'll be talking next week about is, is about how we do that. And so we've, we've moved up from what you've seen previously and a simplistic way of looking at this is we're going to expand that city centre transformation uh, area to the east. So if you, if you notice on the previous one, it's called ECCT, which is Edinburgh City Centre Transformation. So I think we should keep that acronym, but we can call it Enhanced City Centre Transformation. And, and this is about opening up the city centre to people, you know, making it easier uh, to move around if you're on foot or perhaps if you're pushing a buggy or a wheelchair or you're on a mobility scooter, making it much easier to move around. Uh, no change to bus routes. Uh, uh, you'll still be able to access streets. Residents will still be able to park in, in their same old spots. And, uh, and there'll be no change to blue banjo access either. So all, all that's going to fit in place. But what we're going to what, what we're going to reduce is the through traffic. So people driving through the city centre on their way to somewhere else. Uh, so the faster bit. This is really important. So we're going to start this in this summer. So summer 2024. Uh, we're going to dip our toe in the water. We'll, on an experimental basis, we'll close the cow gate to through traffic. Uh, and if that works, the cow gate will never reopen again to through traffic. So then next summer, sorry, next spring, hopefully, uh, we'll start the rollout of the, the scheme as a whole. Uh, so modelling shows that if we were to roll out the scheme tonight, uh, I've got other plans tonight, I've got a burn supper, but if we were to roll it out tonight, the, uh, the the likelihood is we'd see significant delays to public transport tomorrow and probably on Monday as well. So 40% delay to travel times between Toll Cross uh, and Leith Walk. So what we have to do now is, I think what we're going to do now, now is agree this is a way forward, but we have to work harder on how we implement it to make sure as we implement it we don't see those kind of delays to public transport and also businesses and residents inside the city centre are, are, are supported through this as well. You know, in terms of it's business as usual for them. So that's 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 kind of the next this next part of the plan. But the original city centre transformation was a ten year project. Uh, so this, I think, we have to move faster than that, absolutely. And I think that's what people in Edinburgh are saying. So it might be a one weekend project where, if if we're sure we can minimise those delays to public transport, to an ex you know, in, in actually, I have to be, just to be clear, the modelling shows that for a lot of routes through the city centre overnight public transport times would improve. Just on a couple of routes there's real issues uh, and that's detailed in the report. Uh, so there is a chance we could do it for a weekend but I think we have to be very careful about those delays to public transport. Uh, but we're not talking about a 10 year project. We might be talking about you know 10 days, 10 weeks or 10 months but not 10 years. So really, really important stuff. Uh, but just to stress again, it's about cutting through traffic. It's not about reducing access. And it's certainly not about changing public transport routes. Next up, uh, I was going to say even bigger, but you know, it depends on your perspective. Uh, we're going to start consulting on Edinburgh's next tram route. This is going to connect, and now I'll listen to this, Granton to Granton College to the, oh sorry, Edinburgh College at Granton campus, the uh, Western General Hospital. Craigleith Retail Park, uh, the City Centre, Edinburgh University, Cameron Toll Shopping Centre, the Royal Infirmary, uh, the Bio Quarter, and beyond. So, unbelievable, isn't it? It's exciting. Yeah. So this is going to be a huge project, and we're consulting on the route. Now, the the key, one of the key changes to look out for is uh, up next to. Uh, as it comes into Granton, because we've now got a really good connection with Western General Hospital proposed for people to, to look at. Another thing is at the southeast extent of the line, we're also looking at a yard space so we can have a, a marshalling space for the trams so they can be maintained, etc. Because we can't run them all from that single depot, the, the one we have in the west just now. So really important stuff. So so look out for that. I mean, it's going to be huge, you know. So it's big, big for the city. Big for big for the regional economy, without a doubt. Grant, I mean, this should have been the line we did first in the city. I think, you know, connecting these huge development sites, you know, Granton uh, and the South East Wedge, as it used to be called, with these key destinations, you know, the city centre, university, 
a line that runs between two hospitals, uh, a line that runs between Edinburgh College and Edinburgh University. I mean, this is this is where Edinburgh should have started, I think. Uh, so this is just going to highlight. So we, the, the, so the line will be connect, completed in phases. Hopefully, Granton to City Centre it will open in twenty thirty one. All going well. We've just got to get through consultation first, of course. And we've got to speak to the Scottish government about funding. So some big steps to go. Uh, and then it'll reach Shawfair in 2035. Uh, by which time will have been trans interim transport convener for uh, 13 years. Wait a darn time. So there we go. That was a joke about stopping the transport convener. Uh, so this is to remind, this, is, this, this slide's actually from uh, the City Mobility Plan, if memory serves me right. Uh, so, what this is remind me about is that they've also got a report in this, in, that looks at the development west of the Ring Road, the City Bypass, sorry, Ring Road, uh, Dundee terminology, I used to live there, west of the, the City Bypass, uh, the, the massive development is going to happen there over the next decade, decade or so. I think 23,408 houses are, are planned. And so we can't build those houses all connecting to the A8 into the city and expect those people to drive anywhere because it, it's just going to be crazy. So they, they actually have to have absolutely first class uh, public transport connections. Uh, so the, you know, the public transport connections, so they have a viable alternative to use, using their cars. Uh, obviously the trams be, will be there, but the trams probably not going to be right for everyone in terms of where they are, the trips, but also capacity because of the scale of the development we're talking about. So we're talking from the, the west of the city, that development outside the city bypass, we're probably, the, the, those new developments are going to need an additional bus around every minute or so. So an additional 55 buses per hour. Uh, unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And so they've got a report on how we get Edinburgh ready for this. So that's that's largely focuses on improving bus journey times from uh, Broxburn to Maybury, and then in the city mobility plan we have these workups of then how that's going to continue in along the the A8 into Edinburgh City Centre. Obviously, not all those people are going to be coming into the bike into the city every day or even every week, and not all those 55 buses might be coming to Edinburgh either. But we we do have to think about the impact it's going to have on the city. So absolutely a transformative project. And then the last report we're talking about, about 12 minutes already, then the last report we're going to be talking about is about parking enforcement in the city, uh, potentially a new contract for this. And now, there's lots of stuff in this, but the, st the thing that jumped out at me when I was reading it, in terms of the thing I wasn't expecting to see, was around DVLA. And so what the council is going to be doing is hopefully getting the power from DVLA to lift untaxed vehicles off the street. And I know in my ward... Uh, these have been particular issues in the past and it can be difficult to get the DVLA to engage. So the council is going to get that power and we'll impound those vehicles and we'll get funding from the DVLA to do so. So an example of one of those small things that can actually make quite a big difference uh, to communities. But there's other stuff in that, in that report about parking enforcement and one of the things I'm quite, quite keen to see is see the, the parking enforcement work better around the tram line and also work better into the evenings as well as, as part of this, the part of that process, not, not necessarily just that report that you're going to see. So lots of stuff there, and I mean, I, I can't really do it justice without taking, you know, what's this, what about now, 14 minutes and two seconds uh, to talk through all this, but hopefully I've encouraged you at the very least to look at these reports and, and think about what they can mean for you. And I think... More importantly, think of what they mean for Edinburgh, you know, because I don't doubt, I don't doubt there'll be stuff in the reports you have concerns about, and there might be things you disagree with, but let's hope there's things you like. But let's go back to what I was talking about, about, you know, congestion in the city, about uh, the need to hit net zero, about the need to, to, de to deal with inequalities, the need to deal with uh, the, the growth of Edinburgh in terms of all those houses. 37,000 houses land's been set aside for them over the next 10 years. Plus there's more than that in the surrounding local authorities. So I respect that people might not be too keen on this plan that I've outlined, 
But what what is what is the alternative to, to taking this approach to basically setting the setting the city up so that public transport works much more efficiently and it's much easier for people to walk from their house to the local bus stop or tram stop, get to their destination, and then move from their destination. Uh, sorry, get to their destination bus stop and then move to the where whatever their destination is, whether it's a shop or their workplace. And likewise, with that with that level of growth and with the congestion we have already. How can we improve the city centre for people that are there without reducing the traffic going through it? So these these are intractable problems, and, you know, are really really difficult. And what what the council's put forward is what it thinks the solution is. We'll be talking about it next week, and, and might even come to votes as there's not consensus on all this. Uh, but that's the way democracy works. And some people forget. I get a lot of flack sometimes, but I'm only one person in the committee and have the same vote uh, as as everybody else. And so I'm looking forward actually to discussing this with. Uh, members of the other four parties in Edinburgh, because I think all of them, you know, but want want a better, better Edinburgh. It's just sometimes we disagree on how we go about that. Okay, any questions? Uh, just leave them in the comments below, and I'll also put a link to the reports, and I might also share some stuff, more stuff over the next few days about these reports as well. Okay, take care and uh, have a great weekend and all that. <laughs>